Good evening. Good evening. We know it's a little warm out there. We do, yes. But thank God we can feel the warmth. Amen. Amen. Something that has stood the test of time. We're in the light. So why don't we sing about the light? This little light of mine.
Amen. We are here today to celebrate the church. And to remember, yes, indeed, that is a good celebration. And we will move from place to place. As they say, to move from heart to heart. So as we celebrate the church, I welcome you all to sing along with these wonderful, wonderful hymns of the church. And our first is, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, if we, one of my, uh, and this is why I know we are connectional, because my, I'm, I'm from the Methodist church, but from CME, and our, my first pastor, Reverend Elizabeth E. Lillian Hodge, E. Lillian Hodge, this was one of her favorite things, her favorite songs to sing. Because she would say, if I had 10,000 tongues, I would use them all praising and sanctifying thy holy and righteous name. So we can all sing, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
may be seated. Yes.
Y'all ready for a revival? Yeah. All right. Tonight, as we worship, we travel through the ages of Methodism from the holy beginnings through the frontier expansions to now in 2018, looking at some interesting figures of the Methodist movement who have a thing or two to say to the people called Methodist gathered here in this place tonight. As we begin, I invite you to hear these words of God through the prophet Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath into you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. Let us pray. O oh, life breather, breathe your breath of life into us, into the mind, body, and heart of every person gathered here today. Breathe your breath of life and knit us together, shaping us anew in your spirit as a people called Methodist all across these regions we represent. Bring us to life. Revive us. O oh Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Oh look, here comes our founder now. John Wesley never meant to create a new denomination. He was simply a college student who was called by the Spirit to revival to take his faith to a deep level and to do that in the spirit of community. Throughout his life, he pushed the boundaries of holiness, teaching that there is no personal holiness without social holiness. And many in the institutional church of his tradition, the Church of England, were upset with him and misunderstood what he was trying to do. Let's hear what good old J.W. has to share with us. <laughs> Advice to the people called Methodists. The first general advice, which one who loves your souls would earnestly recommend to every one of you is, consider deep and frequent attention to the peculiar circumstances in which you stand. One of these is that you are a new people. Your name is new. Your principles are new in this respect that there is no other set of people among us, and probably not at all even in the Christian world, who hold them all in the same degree of connection, who so strenuously and continually insist on the absolute necessity of universal holiness both in heart and life, of a peaceful, joyous love of God, of a supernatural evidence of things not seen, of, of an inward witness that we are the children of God and of the inspiration of the Holy Ghost in order to any good thought, word, or work. And perhaps there is no other people, at least not visibly united together, who lay so much together. On another peculiar circumstance of your present situation is that you are newly united together and you are just gathered, or so it seems, gathering rather, out of all other societies and congregations. Consider these peculiar circumstances wherein you stand. You will see the propriety of a second advice I would recommend to you. Do not imagine you can avoid giving offense. You heard me. You cannot avoid giving offense. Your very name, Methodist, renders this impossible. And as <laughs> This is the way we wave in Britain. <laughs> your very name Methodist renders this impossible. And as much offense as you give by your name, you will give for more by your principles. What makes 
even your principles even more offensive is this uniting of yourselves together because this union renders you more conspicuous placing you in the eyes of all people third consider this will the god whom i serve be able to deliver me I am not able to deliver myself out of these circumstances, much less am I able to bear them. I know not how to give up my reputation, my friends, my substance, my liberty, my life. Can God give to me to rejoice in doing this? And may I depend on him that he will. Are the hairs on my head all numbered? And does he never fail them that trust in him? Fourthly, Keep in the very path wherein you now tread. Be true to your principles. Never rest again in the dead formality of religion. <laughs> Fifthly, talk not much of what you suffer, of the persecution you've endured at such a time, and the wickedness of your persecutors. Would it be far more profitable for your souls, instead of speaking against them, to pray for them? Amen. I'm saying. I'm sorry, that's not John Wesley saying. <laughs> I don't know if John Wesley asked for amens. I don't, I don't. But don't, doesn't God want you to pray for them? To conform your love towards those unhappy ones whom you believe to be fighting against God by crying, my to him in their behalf that he may open their eyes and change their hearts. I have now only to commend to you the care of him who hath all power in heaven and earth beseeching him that in every circumstance of life you may stand firm as the beaten anvil to the stroke desiring nothing on earth according to all things but dung and dross, <laughs> that you may win Christ, and always remembering it is part of a good champion to be flayed alive and to conquer. Yeah. Thank you, John Wesley, for your advice and your parting words. We indeed are a peculiar, suspicious bunch, raising eyebrows because of our unity and our personal and social holiness practices. Jesus was not afraid to be offensive. John Wesley certainly wasn't. And we should not be either. Not when it comes to who is welcome to access the mercy and new life that can be found in Jesus Christ. So let us sing two more songs written by John's brother, Charles Wesley.
Amen. We will continue with love, divine, all loves excelling. of Roberta Sheminsky.
pursuing religious freedom, Methodism too jumped the Atlantic Ocean and began to spread across the expanding United States, expanding into the hearts and minds of folks in the churches and in new communities. Camp meetings met people where they were and brought a kind of spirit-filled worship that revived the people, that made them enthusiastic for pursuing personal and social holiness. The Methodist movement empowered the people to meet with each other, to celebrate the body of Christ through lay-led love feasts, to lead worship, receiving the sacraments, when the clergy circuit riders came through, this was a new freedom, an accessible religion. However, there wasn't full life for all in the church. Not all could live into God's calling on their lives. Women were among those folks who were not allowed to lead in official capacities. And some rose to the occasion, challenging the church, and the society around them. on Valentine's Day on the show 30 Rock. <laughs> she persistently went through the Methodist Episcopal Church's hoops for ordination, was denied, and tried and tried again. She was finally ordained as the first female minister in the Methodist Protestant Church. And also fought for the women's rights rights to vote for many years and publicly addressed men and women on the matter. Anna, what advice do you have for a people called Methodist? If one asked me why I so persistently pursued ordination as a woman in the Methodist Episcopal Church, I would have to say that it is because God so persistently pursued me. I was called to teach at age 15 in Michigan, and so I taught. I was called to preach, and so I preached, although my family didn't agree with my preaching. I pursued the call that God had put on my life. Many stumbling blocks were put in, on my path, but I never let it deter me. I was a teacher, a minister, finally recognized and ordained not by the Methodist Episcopal Church, but the Methodist Protestant Church. I was a suffragette, a public speaker, a protester, and a medical doctor. As I stand before you, giving advice to the people called Methodist, I say unto you, do not be afraid. When you hear the small voice of the Holy Spirit, whether it is a loud, resounding voice or a still, small voice, don't be afraid to listen. Do not be afraid to heed the Spirit's direction. If there's a stumbling block in your path, don't be deterred by that block. Step over it. Find a way around it. And for God's own sake, I pray that you will be, you will not be a stumbling block to someone else listening to the Spirit's call in their life. Follow the Spirit's blaze and blaze your own trail. Clear a path for the next generation, making possible what was impossible by following our God who makes all things possible. I wish to offer you this prayer. Will you pray with me? May God's spirit that persistently pursues you, guides you and loves you, rest upon you, giving you a peaceful rest and a holy unrest, 
a peaceful rest in the assurance that you understand that you, yes, you are called as you are to the ministry that God has placed upon your heart, whatever that is. And a holy unrest in so much that you will be persistently and you will faithfully pursue that calling God has placed upon your heart until you attain it. And then that you will keep on listening, keep on following God all the way into God's own heart, into God's love. I pray the power and courage of our blazing spirit each upon you, that you may rise and feel God's blessing in you and in your calling, even if you need to blaze trails to reach those great heights to which you're called. Amen. 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 We cannot lower our standard to the level of the world. That's what Anna tells us. Bring your old world to the level of our standard. Thank you, Anna Howard Shaw, for imparting your advice to us, the people called Methodists. Do you feel it? Yes. That breath of God breathing life into us? Again, we thank the Hilltop United Methodist Church Choir for being here with us, and we invite them to share with us once again.
Get it.
seminary. But William felt an urgent call to the frontier west. And so, with little money and basically no education, but with a sincere love for God and God's people in his heart, he set off and eventually arrived in Fort Benton, Montana in 1872 at the age of 24. he was given an official appointment to the newly formed Rocky Mountain Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church at their annual conference meeting in Salt Lake City of all places. His was one of only two appointments to the Montana Territory that year. Over the years, Brother Van, as he became known, preached in saloons and mining camps, established 100 churches, six hospitals, and two institutions of learning in Montana. He's known fondly in Montana, and especially in the hearts of the Yellowstone Conference United Methodists. For his deep faith in God, his deep love for God's people, his ingenuity, and of course, his singing voice. <laughs> and so here he is, the man, the myth, the van, Brother Van. <laughs> What advice would you have for us here? Brothers and sisters, would you adult me a little bit? I'm going to tell you a story about an annual conference gathering some years ago. You see, for many years in the Montana Territory, there were no universities, and there was really no secondary education to speak of. So we got together at the first Montana Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church, and they appointed me to chair a committee like all Methodists do. <laughs> and after 11 years of hard work, we built a Montana Wesleyan College with 60 students and six faculty members in Helena, Montana. <laughs> Unfortunately, a few years later, there was a depression and the school went from 100 students to five. And around the time, same time, they removed the streetcar tracks out to our school in the valley, so we had to figure out how to move the school into town. And then, I will admit, the school's financial status was always at risk. 
And every year at annual conference after that, a proposal was made to close the school. And every single year we defeated it until some people decided they would try and figure out a way around me. So one day I went to lunch. And as I was sitting at lunch, a young man came running to the uh, place where I was to tell me that they were passing a motion right now to close the school. Well, one of the students, they took me back to the conference and I went in and I was totally out of order. And I knelt down on one knee and I invited us to pray. And Bishop Luckuck knew I was out of order too and he knelt down to pray. We prayed as long as we could. And I said, under God, brethren, we cannot let God's vision for us be taken from us. I said to prayer, everyone. And as I knelt down and stayed there, we stayed there for a long time in a hot room with more clothes on than you all have. <laughs> and one by one, we waited them out until each person in that room said, Amen. And that school did not close. As that old building was uh, getting a little bit run down, we closed it down, but God gave me vision. And later on, we opened that place, the deaconess and I, to help house the orphan children at the end of the orphan train. All is that to say, my advice I would give to each and every one of you is that the Lord God goes before us, goes out into the world leading us with the Spirit, and that we are called to follow that God to make a difference in the ways we serve our field. Amen? Amen. Wesleyan College, the school that Brother Van so passionately prayed for and spoke about, eventually merged with several other institutions and moved from Helena to Billings, where it is now known as Rocky Mountain College. It's still affiliated with the United Methodist Church to this day. The Montana Deaconess School eventually became Inner Mountain Children's Home and continues to serve children and families in need through residential and community-based programs. It's the oldest child welfare agency in the state of Montana. When the Spirit of God breathes life into us, when we follow where the Spirit leads, lives are changed, families are changed, communities are changed in ways that we can't always imagine from where we stand. But when we step out in faith, when we follow where the Spirit calls us, we become part of a beloved community that exists beyond us, across years and places. So let us join together in what has become known as Brother Van's song, Harvest Time. <laughs> the spirit of unity something happened today when we were in our rehearsal some of our Native American brothers came and shared a song we sang it hallelujah and they shared it in many different languages in their native tongue he said what does that have to do with this well it's about cultures coming together and people sharing what means something to them. Amen? Amen? So this song has a contingency of people and we want you to come forward and sing it in the spirit of what? Harvest time. Amen? Amen. Because you know it well and we're going to sing, but we want you to lead out with us. So those that can come, come join us. Amen? There we go. That's what we say. Connecting people. Amen. Come on. There we go. There we go. Yes. That's what I'm saying. In the spirit of harvest time. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.
has me, and I told him he's a little late. <laughs> people called United Methodists of the Mountain Sky area. And I have a few things I want to say. Just a few because I know you're hungry. But I want you to know we are living the future. We are living what the church can be. People of great differences of geography and theology and races and ethnicities and languages we show what unity looks like. Amen. Amen. So there's four things I want you to remember, because if we're going to do this, we need to do it well. And the first thing is that we be a people of prayer, because that's what sets us apart from others. Because when we pray, we tap into a power that is beyond us and yet within us, that draws us together, that enables us to do things we thought were impossible because everything is possible with God. The other thing is, I want us to love each other deeply. Love is hard work. And we're going to do it anyway. Love is a force that nothing can stop. No hatred, no division, no feelings of unworthiness, no brokenness can stop love. So may we love one another so much that people keep looking at us and saying, those people truly love each other, and I want to be a part of that love. <laughs> then let us keep asking ourselves, who's not here? Who has been left out? Who are we not seeing? Who doesn't feel welcomed? Because that's also our work to do. Our beloved community is incomplete as long as people feel they can't be a part of who we are. So what do we, who do we need to be? What do we need to do? Because it's not just come in and be us. It's come and let's all be changed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And then continue to build up God's beloved community. Don't stop. Where there is injustice, say something. Because, and actually, oh, I forgot, there's a fifth thing and it's the most important. Don't stop celebrating. Because we've got this great love from God through Jesus Christ that sets every single one of us free. Right. And that's something to sing and dance about. If, you're, if, 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 if one's faith is dour and sour, I think we've missed something. Because I don't know about you, but I've got joy in my heart. And nothing takes it away. Because it doesn't come from me. It comes from God. It comes from the Holy Spirit. So we need to be celebrating as often as we can. So that's my message. I get to talk to you way too much. But I just want you to know how much I love you. I love you so much. I feel like God has blessed me beyond measure because of the life we share together and the ministry we're called to do. So may God bless each and every one of you. I think uh, there's one more thing here before we eat, so I'm just going to scoot out of the way. I can keep going. Thank you, Bishop, for your advice for the people called Methodists. the Rocky Mountain Conferences song, and it is by a man by the name of Julian Rush, Woo! the people of Boulder and Denver, and then the Colorado AIDS Project, so many people, so many beloved people. And so let us sing In the Midst of New Dimensions, and we're gonna sing verses one and 
and six with the refrains, and so they'll be right on the screen for you. Can we stand? Yes, thank you. sun this afternoon and all of you are ready to eat, right? Yeah. That sounded pretty uh, enthusiastic. Yeah. Let's get I heard you were hungry, right? Yeah. Okay, but here's the deal. I know you're hungry for more than food because tonight you've got one of the coolest concerts you're ever going to see this entire summer. This is where the summer series starts right here and it's going to be amazing. So now... I want you to go to the sides, to the back, to wherever you want to go to get your food. Take your little blue ticket out of your pocket. Let's see, I got mine right here. And I'm going to go over because the Tongans are serving and they're going to have plated food over here that's going to be amazing. And then behind you, we've got, we've got Mexican food. We've got uh, all kinds of good so sauce boss over here. We've got something else. We've got stuff everywhere. And it's great and it's good. And if you don't want Tongan food, have some of the gals. But no, use your no, ticket. You get one ticket each. Now, what I'll recommend with the Tongan food, if you've never had it before, it's amazing. take a little bit of everything amazing. and eat it and enjoy it. And they said if they've got more later on, you can come back for more. But for now, let's get everybody fed and going. So you all want to eat? Let's say grace. Holy Father, Heavenly Creator, God Almighty, look down on this place and bless this food and the hands that have made it. Bless those that are about to eat it. Bless all these people here gathered that are called Methodists. Bless all of us to the soul that we are and build us with this food. Fill us to overflowing and fill us with the joy of this evening. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Now go, quick, so that you can get back here for the concert. Tongan youth, I'm calling you up and I need you to get lined up on the sides. Over
our lovely ladies go back there and get ready for our next number. Our next number we're about to full perform is Fiji. Who knows how they welcome you in Fiji? Yes! I hope you guys can repeat after me. Are you guys sure you're not Polynesian? <laughs> I don't you guys sound like pretty Fiji. good out there. All right, so in Fiji, Fiji, they like to have um, uh, painted faces, and they wear the big top of cloth is on them, and they use fans, because in Fiji it's hot. So they need a fan to fan themselves, so especially the ladies, okay? So I'm hoping that we are ready. But since they're not, you guys are stuck with me. But let me start off with this. God is good! God is good! And all the time! God is good! Amen! Um, just to tell you a little bit about our youth. Um, our youth, um, we start from junior high to high school. Um, once they graduate from high school, we, they go on to being young adults. Um, this youth right here, though, I have to say I'm very, very proud of them. Um, they actually spend their weekends not at home on video games, or not at the salon doing their nails, even though they like to do nails. They actually spend their time at church. And at church, um, we try to clean. <laughs> we try to get them to clean, because what teenagers like cleaning these days? None. <laughs> so we try to get them to clean, but the, what they also do is actually they come together and they fellowship, and they actually try to see what they can do in the future for the future of our church, um, which is our Methodist community. Um, so um, right now we are actually working on a nursery inside of our church that they actually went and fundraised to um, so that way we can have a nursery inside our church that we built, but we need to remodel. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm still trying to see for a cue here, and I guess not. So let's sing a song, shall we? Who has a song we could sing? No? Are we shy today? It's fresh like spring, you've got to sing, you want to pass it on. Spring, when all the birds are flooding, the birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how It's fresh like spring. You want to pass it on. All right. Oh. She knows the hymnal front to back. I'm telling you, she got the thing. Hey, name a hymn? Yeah, got it. We could do. We could do that. We could do that. Hey, a uh, couple of things. While you guys are getting all your food ready, I'm gonna let you do the gasping thing and do all that big stuff. I'm gonna let everybody know. There's a couple of things happening tonight that are going on around us that I want you to participate in. Tonight is mission night. So all of our missions have brought out uh, all kinds of different things for you to do. So here's a couple of things on the back of the bulletin from earlier. If you didn't get this, I can read them off for you and let you know. We've got mini golf over at the Volunteers in Mission. The disaster, tra uh, disaster response trailer up here uh, has 
a tool, uh, has their tool trailer up there and they've got all sorts of demonstrations going on with it. Then uh, to the front of that, you're gonna start seeing people staging. You're gonna start seeing some teams come in. Our tug of love is gonna happen here just after the Tongan dancers get wrapped up and we're gonna move into those and we're gonna have some uh, fun stuff going on with that. The missionary support teams back up here, they've got a memory game going on. I challenged them. Uh, I answered four out of five questions, right? So that's not too bad. And they got some tough questions, so you're gonna have to think about those. Mission U's got educational events going on. Intermountain Children's Home has children's games. Those are back over here in the corner. They got some really amazing things happening over here where they're doing some occupational therapy stuff that you can go over and participate in. And then we've got a crossword puzzle back up here for the Deaconesses and the United Methodist Women have a toss game going on. And we've got Global Missions has a challenge, uh, challenge game going on. And UMCOR has the flood bucket races happening tonight. So we want all of you to participate and enjoy uh, get, if you've got kids, let them go and play. They're going to just have a great time. Did everybody get enough food? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Did everybody get enough Tongan food? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty awesome, huh? Let's give it up for the Tongans. They have done a great job. They've done a wonderful job. Not only that, they brought out, they brought out not only these dancers, but the food. They've just been... They've been giving. The Tongas are located uh, just down here. They've got a couple of churches around the area, but they're they're uh, they're, they're kind of unique to the area. And you're not going to see it. You know, we're not going to get a Tongan church in Yellowstone probably anytime soon. And so here we have all of these people giving to us in such a wonderful way. All of our friends and neighbors, all of our family here, doing something amazing and just wonderful. So we've got a little bit more dancing that we're going to do, and then we're going to take a break for the Tug of Love. If you haven't donated to the Tug of Love, please do now. There's kids circulating with the shirts on. You're going to see them in multiple colored shirts. And if they come by and ask you for a few bucks, give them a few bucks. Help them out. Help them so that they can contribute toward the program with the Tug of Love. All right. Okay. All right. And more dancing with our Tongan dancers.
I bet they lost their voice like I did. Wait, you're spinning on the side, right? Well, actually, yeah, that's what I lost my voice. Have a one. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, leave you with one last number. And this last number is actually from the island that we are from, which is the island of Tonga. And in the island of Tonga, we say, Malo Malay! Malo See, now, you, now I know you all have Tongan friends. Because a lot of people can't say hello in such long words. <laughs> all right, and of course you all know, um, if you don't, that we are actually the last kingdom um, standing in the South Pacific. Um, we still have, we are still ruled by a king and a queen. Um, we have the royal family in the um, South Pacific. Um, with Tonga, um, we're going to have the girls come out here to perform a group um, dance. And what the dance they're going to perform is the Talunga. And with the Talunga, they actually tell their story with their hands. Um, Tonga dances is actually really graceful and really serious. Um, during the dance, a lot of times we uh, welcome you if you would like to put money on the lovely girls. Um, that should show so the show the appreciation of their beautiful and graceful dance that they're about to do. So um, you will see boys down back here dancing. They'll probably be sticking money on them as well. <laughs> Um, so hopefully, I'm hoping my girls are ready. Girls? Oh, I hear my main, that's my main girl over there. That's my main girl, Mama Loy. Everyone, round of applause for Mama Loy. She is actually um, part of the reason they are wearing, the costume they were wearing. She actually brought the, um, the Thalvala that they're wearing from Tonga itself. So you guys get the original show. Awesome. Oh, yes. So uh, while we're waiting for the girls to come out, they're going to be out here in just a quick moment. On the right-hand side, up here on this side of the stage, we are going to ask the teams of fire, flood, tsunami, and hurricane to move on over Go to on, your left, my right, uh, and come up and get ready for the tug of love. For those of you that are back up here, uh, make way for the teams of drought, blizzard, tornado, and earthquake. They're going to be joining together in forces up here to do their tug of love. So get the tug of love teams together, and we're going to invite the Tongan girls out for their dance. I'm going to be doing slides. In the meantime, everybody's having a good time. And I see we've gotten enough food that's good because i got a couple of sleepy people out here. Sleepy people are going to wake up as soon as they start tugging this rope around, I can guarantee you that. Hey, if you got a few bucks and you want to put them on the girls up front, they are making donations as well tonight toward the causes that we're doing with all of our original work this evening. So if, you, uh, if you're so inclined, wish to come forward, you're certainly welcome to. And you can come forward and the girls will accept your monies as well. So you can come on forward and do that. Uh, are you guys enjoying the Tonga Dancers? All right, after the Tonga Dancers and the Tug of Love, we have the Wesley Bell Ringer, the largest bell choir in North America, is going to be here tonight to play for you. And you have not, you've never heard anything like this. Every time they play, it brings me goosebumps. I, I get choked up. They're just amazing. They're, they're the most wonderful kids. They've got a great director. They just do a fantastic job. They're in for a treat. And then later on tonight, we are going to be introducing for the first time on a stage anywhere. We're going to be introducing a brand new praise band right here. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing and awesome. So stick around for the fun and you're, we're just going to have a good time. And remember, tonight is mission night. So with mission night throughout the entire area, we've got stuff that you can do, places that you can go to find out more about the missions that we do throughout the, the Rocky Mountain Yellowstone conferences and throughout the entire area. So please check out what's going on throughout the missional work uh, throughout the area. And with that, I'm going to leave it back up. The girls are going to be out here in just one quick second. Ah, 
climb up here and put this back here so this is out of their way. And if white Tongan girls come out. I'm, I'm about to. Oh, okay. And then we're going to go around and get some of the, the tagalog. Mm -hmm. Tagalog, some of the, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I was wondering because I was, I was prepared to kind of hand a can it. Okay. You good? Ooh, you're bringing it in. What you guys What you guys got? Oh my gosh, we got like everything. Oh. <laughs> it was so good. We got some of I had a taxi taco. So I got, we got a little pasta. Donuts. Or yeah. Donuts. Or donuts. There was, there was, there was but I missed out on the tongue. Um, so. I have a dude down here with his like donut thing. Oh my gosh. So a couple of quick things too while I've got you here. Uh, I wanted to let you know, with the emergency uh, van that's back up here, you're going to see this trailer that's parked back up here uh, for our emergency UMCOR relief van. This thing has been put together in the last year. It's brand new. You guys help pay for it, and it takes emergency relief into areas just like the Houston hurricane that we just had and some of the other areas that we've had around where we've had disasters. These guys can mobilize in moments, literally. They've just got everything ready and ready to go, and they can pack up and go and take a team down to be any place that we can be throughout the U.S. And to be quite honest with you, I know some of the team members up there, and if you haven't seen what's going on up there, it's, a, it's just an amazing thing. Their mission is an early response team to provide a caring Christian presence in the aftermath of disaster. How many of you know UMCOR? Raise your hand if you know UMCOR. Do you know that UMCOR sticks around longer than anybody else after a disaster? Did you know that? Did you know that uh, Lions, anybody here from Lions? Raise your hand. Lions people, right, skip. Okay, yeah, yeah. How long did it take him to get out of Lions after the floods? Five years? I think it was about five years, wasn't it? Four years. So it took them four years to get out. And they left the day that the last house, the last home was cleaned up and ready to go. That's when Umcor left. Everybody else had gone before that time. You know who the first responders are that come into a disaster area? You've heard, right? Red Cross, you've heard that, right? Salvation Army, you hear them a little bit? You know who they send in? They send us in. Umcor goes first. So your dollars go directly toward making big differences in all kinds of people's lives. And this trailer is part of those dollars. So make sure you check it out this evening and look at what's going on back there because it is spectacular. And we've got great stuff happening there. Also, there's extra food available. So if you want to go back for some more food, you're, you're welcome to head back up and get some more food. And there's lots of stuff going on. So keep moving around and we'll get the girls out here in just a second. We are so pro at it. Um, so this will be our last performance for you tonight. Um, it won't be the last time you will see these beautiful faces, for these are the future of our Tonga United Methodist Church to continue the Lord's work and to remain in His faith. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it to the girls. And once again, thank you all so much. And once again, God is good! All the time!
killing our Tongan dancers. Weren't they amazing? Let me tell you, if you went to Hawaii and you paid for what you just got here, I'm guaranteeing you, every one of you would have paid 50, 60 bucks just for the food and the entertainment that you got tonight. And there's more to come. In fact, right now, I want you to turn your attention this way. Oh. Turn your attention this way. So, um, usually when the, the money is given to the dancers, they, they take it home to, you know, go spend it. Uh, but our youth is actually, they wanted to give it to the tug of love. I actually, you, you never had a minister money. It's right. like one of those dangerous things that we never do in our churches is, oh, and more's coming this way. That's it so um, I don't honestly know what to do with it. It's not in place. So I'll, I'll make it, I'll, we'll work it out. Um, we're going to do it this way. The team, the team that wins the tug of love this round will give it to one of the two teams that's up here. So we'll flip for it or something. So on this side over here, let's see, which teams do we have? Oh my goodness, they're getting geared up already. It's getting out of hand. This is gonna be too much fun. Ladies and gentlemen, uh,
Sometimes technology is more than we can all handle, right? Uh, a couple of quick things. First off, I wanted to not only the Wesley Bell Rings, these guys are incredible, aren't they? Woo! What you don't realize is there's a legacy of people that make this sound happen in a way that you, you can't even imagine. And um, and we have a mentor here. I'm gonna I'm not gonna mention the mentor's name, but I'm gonna acknowledge that one of our uh, directors, past directors, is here tonight uh, with his wife, and we're just so pleased and privileged to have them here. But what I am going to recognize is that uh, a number of years ago, I got to work at Christ United Methodist Church in Salt Lake City. And while I was working there, there's this one girl that kept passing me in the halls, and for the life of me, I worked hard to remember her name and forgot it every time she got on stage. And every time Katie Lay showed up, she brought just this beautiful music forward from the people that she worked with. And she has a gift and a talent. And she was chosen to be the director of this group this year. And she has been just outstanding. Beyond what she does here, she is an amazing person. And she gives to her community in great ways. And I'm proud to say that she's one of my friends. And I'm just really proud to recognize the director, Katie Lane. But to tell you what a group of people these people are, we have, if you're a college student and you returned just to play for this trip, raise your hand. These kids came back to, from school, they came back for their summers to do this. In fact, a few of them are swapping off during the summer to make sure it happens. Uh, yeah, I'm going to mention one young man. The, in the back row, there's some really heavy bells. Really heavy bells. And one of those bells is being hoisted by a young man that has a broken hand. And he continues to play and will continue to play for the entire uh, trip that these guys are on. It's just too much. And I'm so proud of him. But here's to give you an idea of how amazing these young people are. They grow from being uh, junior high children to being high school kids that are just incredible to being college students that are out of this world. And when I say out of this world, this young man right here, the one, the one with the long moppy hair and the, sun, the glasses, he is studying to be, what did you say, CP? What are you studying to be? An astrophysicist. CP is going to be an astrophysicist. And, and he's just one of them. I could name, I could go through this whole bunch and just tell you the amazing things that they do, each one of them. They are incredible kids. They do incredible work. And the Wesley Bell Ringers are an incredible group, and we're so blessed to have them here. When we're done with the Wesley Bell Ringers, we're going to go right into our next act, and we're going to have that come up next, and we'll give you some more announcements. But before we go, can we hear one more song from you guys? Katie and the Wesley Bell Ringers.